He is a former All White. Worked at Ufa, worked at FIFA and so forth. Great mate of the show. Welcome back, Fred. Hey, Marty. How's it going? Well, a little bit tired after staying up late last <laughs> night. We're, we're older these days, Fred, and anything after midnight, I must admit, it's a, it's a bleary start to the day. But, dude, what a cracking game that was last night. Yeah, excellent. Really good, high-quality high game and uh, you know, full of contrasts, I think, um, you know, this stylistically between the two teams, possession versus you know, counter-attack, a, a classic case of that. Um, you know, you had the home crowd versus uh, the old enemy. So, yeah, but, but in the end, I think England controlled their emotions and also controlled the game and, uh, and eventually ran out deserved winners. You know, they, they were better across the park, passed the ball better, um, created more opportunities uh, and, yeah, as I say, deserved winners. Although Australia did give them, you know, a, a, a patch of like 15 minutes in the second half where, you know, they got the crowd going, scored a great goal through Sam Kerr. Yeah, brilliant goal. Um, yeah, brilliant goal, and um, and made made it look like you know, it was going to be a, a tighter uh, affair than it ended up being. Uh, goal of the tournament for me, that goal was. Any time any player in any football nah, match nah, picks it up, well, come on, in your, own, hope, in your own half, hope, in your own half, and you run like that. <laughs> the, the, the Colombian player <laughs> jinked through the, the down the down nah, inside okay. the yeah, box. Right. <laughs> yeah, and also the Panamanian free kick. Great I mean, there's, look, um, you know, one of the things, though, is, is in terms of the defending, which uh, for that Sam Kerr goal, and also you can accuse the Australian defenders of both uh, Hemp and Russo's yeah. goal. When you've got a player running towards you like that, and you've got an extra defender, somebody's got to challenge the ball. You keep backing off like that. I mean, eventually, though, at the edge of the area, you know, Sam Kerr had a clear shot at goal. Um, and as far as those last two England goals go, both times the defender had the opportunity to clear. And in actual fact, the last goal, I think there was a four on two in terms of defenders to attackers. So what's going wrong at the back? Yeah, I think there was too much hesitation. They, they, they backed, as you say, they backed off, backed off and invited, especially in the Sam Kerr example, they, they invited her to to shoot and boy she showed what she can do um off off her right foot um in the in the aussie cases i thought the defending through the whole um game wasn't really up to up to the mark and uh you know you had lauren hemp and, and russo um getting in behind um they they had they had opportunities inside the box and with space and so yeah the the i think ultimately that was that was australia's downfall they they def they didn't defend well enough. Um, however, um, I think the the key thing was that England controlled the midfield. Um, you know, it was four four two versus three four three, and England had more pressure on the Australian defence, and they couldn't they couldn't um, handle that. You know, and so uh, they were trying to play counter attacking transition football. They were trying to get the ball forward, Australia. They were trying to get the ball forward as quick as possible. Um, and so they ended up with in large patches of the game just chasing the ball. And eventually they, you know, the, the, they tired out and the gap started to open up. But uh, for their two goals, the, the second and third goal that England scored, yeah, poor defending, um, hesitation at the back, and England have the players to capitalise on that. I think they're saving the best for last, the Lionesses, the England ladies. I was going to call them the Poms. I'm allowed to call them the Poms. I mean, they're the Poms, aren't they? You know, because all of these tournaments, you've got to time your run. You know, seven games is a lot of games. You, there's no point playing your best football in that first game and then all, all of a sudden petering out come this time. And that was the, their best performance, I thought, out of all of the games that I've watched them so far. You agree? Yeah, absolutely. By far. By far and away, I thought, against a good opposition. Um, what, what can Spain offer? Um, well, Spain will control the ball better. Um, that Spain-Sweden um, game, in patches, uh, how Spain played out from the back was breathtaking, I thought, um, especially in tight areas. They're, they're fizzing the ball around, um, technically very, very good. Uh, but I think the occasion as well, they have to, I think for Spain, you know, this is completely uncharted territory for them. Um, England have, they haven't been to the final, but they've been to semis previously. So, you know, they sort of know their way around this, this part of the tournament. Um, but Spain, this is, this is all new for them. And for those players, I think it'll be a big part of it is, is you know, not getting too far, not playing the game before the game's played. Um, so you don't, you know, you just got to try and just get out there as difficult as it is. Just get out there and give it your best. But, um, yeah, you don't, you, you can't say, oh, I think I'm going to do this and this and this in the game because you just have to play it as it comes 
on the day and try not to get too emotional about the whole thing. Um, but England will go in as favourites, but I think Spain have the Spain of the cattle to give them a really good run. Fred Young is with us, former All Whites, worked at UFA, worked at FIFA, worked at Oceania, all of that kind of stuff. In terms of the tournament, and you say, you know, the football was breathtaking. I look, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know what I'm looking at. I, I, I still demand a higher standard from the goalkeepers. I think that that, that that lack of athleticism showed a little bit last night. It's not a criticism, it's just a reality of it. Um, you know, the first team that gets, a, you know, a goalkeeper that can actually, you know, jump and, and dive and, and, you know, throw themselves around the goal, I think is probably going to actually propel themselves right up the ladder of women's football um, because there's a couple of moments here last night where you think, you know, a, a, you know, a male goalkeeper would have saved that. I know it's not apples with apples, but, but you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, but um, I think the, the levels have, uh, are continually increasing. I think, um, you know, it'll, it'll just head the same way that the men's game has gone over the years um, because the investment will be there now. You know, people will see that, yeah, you're drawing billions of eyeballs, you're filling stadiums, um, so, you know, the, now the money starts to flow. And when that happens, you attract better athletes, better players, and the standards go up. And so it's this cycle, you know, you just sort of have to get to a, a threshold and then things will, will kick on. Um, but, you know, no, you cannot compare the male and female game. It's a, it's a fallacy to do that, um, I think. So, yeah, it's, I think you take, you look at the game and go, this is the level that, that, that these players play at. And it's a high standard. Yeah, it is. It's a very no high question. standard. And, um, you know, and the technical ability, the, the like I say, the athleticism of the players that you're watching um, is good. And so you take it for what it is. It's, it, like I said, it's, a, it's, it's folly to, to compare it to the men because it's they're two different sports. So, you know, just as tennis is, is um, male tennis and female tennis are two different sports, it's the comparison, you, you can't compare. You just take this keeper, Mary Earps, is a great goalkeeper. Um, you know, and Arnold's a great goalkeeper at the other end, but you can compare their abilities side by side, but uh, you cannot sit there and go compare Mary Earps to a male goalkeeper because that, yeah, as I say, that's folly. A nice perspective. Well said on that. A couple of other football matters before we leave. Um, I know that you've only just stopped guffawing after reading the headlines about Andrew Pragnall saying it's only a matter of when, not if, that we host the World Cup. Um, Fred, you know, with all due respect to Mr. Pragnall, I admire, you know, the enthusiasm and so forth. But the reality of this, I mean, you know, you've worked inside these organisations. I mean, people just, they read those headlines and if you'd have no context applied to it or scrutiny applied to it, it's easy to go, oh, wow, look, we've just hosted a, co-hosted a Women's World Cup. We could do a men's. There is no chance that it comes here. Let's be honest. Uh, well, if, 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 if everything aligned, then you may be talking in 20 years' time, given the cycle of where the World Cup's going to go. Um, but there's so many things that would have to align for that to actually happen. Um, you know, the, it wouldn't be an Australian-New Zealand World Cup. There would have to be one or two other Asian countries in there. So you're talking, you know, big um, population bases, Philippines, Indonesia, something like that. Then, then suddenly you're talking distances, you know, the minimum size stadium is 40,000 for the group stage. We only have one of those, and I can't see us building any more. So, um, you know, given, uh, given that Christchurch are, are building a brand new stadium and it's going to have 35,000 people in. So where, where are they going to play? You can't play all the games on one pitch at Eden Park. So, you know, the, the, even those sorts of things. Uh, will FIFA take their premium product and put and play games at 1 a.m. in the morning. There you go, in mate. Their biggest mar- in their biggest market yeah. in Europe. They've done it with a woman, yes, but would they do it with their 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 key event? Don't know. Um, so, and probably um, our time zones aren't going to change too much in uh, <laughs> in the future. I wouldn't think. No. So no, um, no, some probably. geographical realignment of the world <laughs> takes place. A meteorite hits, and all of a sudden we end up by Spain. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's pie in the sky stuff. Look, I mean, it's lovely to think about, but it's just not real, and it. You know, this is what frustrates me about the mainstream media is that, you know, just reporting this stuff verbatim is fact. Can I just ask you also about Mason Greenwood, mate? Because Man United put out a statement today. You know that I've been a fan for 48 years. I don't want to see this guy anywhere near a red shirt, Fred. And and it's not a, it's not about their inquiry or investigation and whether or not they've uncovered it. I don't care. The divisiveness of this guy is you don't need it in a club regardless. I mean, what he's actually done, what we know... 
and now the witnesses won't give evidence and now there's... I mean, look, we all know what's going on here, don't we? I mean, I think we can read between the lines. Well, I, th- I think this, this is a this is where clubs, I think, lose their, lose their way and because they... Um, riding above everything, you should have the, the values of the club. Now, if the values of the club are we can, we'll sign anyone, you know, a drug runner, a, a gun runner, a whatever, um, then that's fine. You sign anyone and all you're doing is, is pursuing trophies regardless. But if, you, if your club has some values and you want to stick by them, then I think that should, um, that should trump everything else um, within the club. And so, you know, that should guide your, um, your signings as well and the players you want to attract and the environment you want to build at that club. And so I think um, you know, these, these are the cases where club values should sit above um, you know, the, the profits and, and the chase for silver. Devlin. You better believe it! The Platform.